looks super wild and super rugged, and I think we're gonna see something really special today. So it is up! Go, go, go! Oh, that's so cute. The kids on shore are imitating all the moves that you're doing, Will. We want the ship at five. We want the ship at five. What do we want? <laughs> ship at five! When do we want it? This is the story of a sailboat named Sylvia and the ragtag crew that call her home. Join us each week as we explore our planet, both above and below the surface, and find out what it's really like to live a life at sea. This is Expedition Drenched. It's early in the morning, but I, I slept quite well. Today we are going to the waterfall. Now I at the village. Yeah. Oh, the kids on shore are imitating all the moves that you're doing, Will. Been doing it for the last 20 minutes. Oh, that's so cute. You can hear them giggling all the way over here. Good morning. How adorable. For a gym membership with this view, you have to pay extra. <laughs> They're super funny. I think otherwise I would have quit already 10 minutes ago. <laughs> it's just funny to see them do everything <laughs> Decided to give Peanut a breakfast because today. She's in her bucket. She can enjoy the beautiful morning too. Do you have a cup or no? <laughs> Going to shore, and John knows a cool hike to a cave and waterfall. This island looks super wild and super rugged, and I think we're gonna see something really special today. You saw all the kids that were looking at us, and then they're running and trying to follow the daddy, and you can see them there in the middle of nowhere. We're pulling up to a cliffside and it's like the cutest trees and the craziest green cliffs and we're actually just truly in the middle of nowhere and John knows exactly the little slit in the mangrove that we need to pull into so he's guiding us in. Yeah. She's really yeah. Did you guys come all the way from there? Oh, we saw you running. <laughs> You're fast. It's pretty spectacular. We're like completely covered in a canopy of trees, so you can't even see the sky. And we're walking along a spring that's all this really cold water. You can feel like the coolness coming off the water. And the kids are, you know, walking barefoot up the pipes, and we're all like scrambling up on the rocks. So it's very cool to see how at home they are here. We just made it to the entrance of the cave and look at the water, like the shape of the cave. It looks quite promising. And they said that it was like three kilometers in a straight line. So, should we go? Let's go! When you are trying to rock climb and then you came face to face to... Oh! Oh, no. oh! Let's go! Oh, you can hear them kind of, and their wings flapping, and it whizzed right by your head. 
What do you think of our uh, tour guides so far? I love them. They are super helpful, you know, that I'm taking like if we are okay, helping us, like they are like the best. They're also making like scary sounds, like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is their playground. You can tell that they come here all the yeah. time. They know exactly where to go. They're jumping from rock to rock. And I love it. I love it's it. It's so cute. Into the darkness. I saw the clouds roll and the falling rain sink into every. I've actually never been so far in a cave. I think it's amazing. You can just keep on walking. It's a bit scary. And then you have the highway of all the beds going on and it's like there's traffic or something. After a quick regroup, John was going to take us into the jungle to find another hidden gem in this remote paradise. Here we come again! Exhausting. It's like too humid, so I think everybody's like drenched. <laughs> but it's beautiful. It's stunning. Steep and slick and sweaty and lovely. Go go go! Oh yeah. John's protecting us from these. Oh. It's like jungle version of a cactus. Oh, here. Here. Okay. What are you getting? Here. 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 We've earned a dip in the fresh cold water. Look at I tore. I tore is like sticking his head right in. How much better do you feel? Oh, so much better. It felt great. We're sweating so much and I think it's been there for 10 minutes and so good. It feels, yeah, I feel alive. <laughs> On our way back to Sylvia, we made our way back to the village and we're lucky enough to get to know a pretty special woman. It's hard to imagine a remote paradise like the Solomons as one of the epicenters of World War II in the Pacific. But in August of 1942, families just like these suddenly found themselves thrust in the middle of a war they knew nothing about. From uh, USA, from America. Yes. My grandpa was here was uh, here during the war. What is your name? Uh, <laughs> Hilda Ko Kui. Kui. Hilda Kui. With the help of John as our translator, we were able to learn a little bit about Hilda, the only person in the village today who was alive when the Japanese attacked in 1942. 
and do you know how old you are? 80 plus. How old were you during the war when the war started? And we had a new Lumu. Ah, uh, 20 years old. Oh. Yep, set. So she remembers. She remember. When Japan arrived, did you understand what was going on and what happened? And they stay there and uh, they kill the peas, kill the dog, kill the people holding the women kill all the uh, chicken in the village, shoot all the locals, so everybody disappear in the village. So people, they operate, but one thing is good, they have all the caves in the bush. They so went every, up to the yeah, cave, the cave we yes, were just at. That's why you see our uh, Florida people, if not know any Florida people, they go into the cave when the American come and destroy it all the Japanese when they arrived in 6th of August. So they stay in the cave where we've been already. How did you know when it was safe to come out? All the chip, the communication, so everybody come in the village. That's why we all together, we just come out and everything is peace. Did life go back to normal or was Solomon's forever changed? Okay, when the uh, Japanese and American, they uh, finished the uh, bombing and everything, the life is a little bit hard because from the food, the water because everything is going to the bombing and uh, yeah so the life is not easy so they came out near the uh, sea water then they see some other things floating on the ocean they pick it up then pick the biscuit pick the rice pick the meat then they try to maintain with their life she says we think that this village is very beautiful Mateo! and we uh, appreciate Mateo! them uh, allowing us to stay Mateo! and uh, sharing their stories with us. Man, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she's got a very, very long life. Yes. Mm -hmm. She's very happy about mm -hmm. it. She says she's welcome for everything mm -hmm. that you see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are some of the few physical artifacts in this village that's left over from the war. This was an American kettle that Hilda's late husband had collected. Today was our first taste of the living history that can be found throughout many parts of the Solomon Islands. We didn't know until now that the caves we waded through earlier had once provided life-saving refuge in the midst of what can only be described as sheer terror. To stand where Hilda and her family stood, which was once full of trembling silence, now full of echoes of laughter and wild calls of the descendants of those who managed to survive is an experience I won't soon forget. If I'm looking at Nate with his I'm stirring his air, I would say qu'il est folle aussi. <laughs> <laughs> What's Nate's hair situation? He have a big dreadlock, the size of an hamster. Yeah. That takes a three quarter of his hair. But the thing with Nate is that he's very sassy with his hair. Yeah. And he's always pretending he has the longest hair on the boat and yeah. really saying bright. that girls are jealous that we're jealous of his hair and stuff. Always yeah. bragging, yeah. But now. But he doesn't know how to handle it himself. And the girls are trying to exchange alcohol for. Air care, 
<laughs> we'll see how it goes. What were some of the offers that were on the table? Ah, uh, at the beginning, Nerea asked for a bottle of Bailey's. She went too high. Yeah. And then she asked for a shot, <laughs> which is more realistic. Yeah. And a Sian two beers. How's dinner coming along? Ah, I made a shepherd pie, but a French Canadian one, which Ooh. is a vegetarian version. So it's lentils with corn and mashed potatoes. And it's in the oven for maybe another 20 minutes. We want the shepherd pie. We want the shepherd pie. We want the shepherd pie. What do we want? <laughs> shepherd pie! When do we want it? No! But 20 minutes will be okay. <laughs> I want food, Emily. Let's just try it. We'll try peanut tactic. <laughs> this is very French Canadian. This is a meal every French Canadian mom makes to her children Aww. to make sure they don't complain. This is an easy night. No complaining. Everybody will eat this schlap, the ketchup, and every kid is happy. <laughs> Kids finally got their food. We got the yum, kiss, yum, we got yum. the ketchup on the table. Yum. Peanut's got her schlop, she's a happy girl. Say goodnight to everyone, Peanut. Say goodnight, we'll see you tomorrow. Goodnight. Good Tune in next time as we check out one of the most famous dive sites in all of the Solomon Islands reveal a secret stowaway we've been hiding, and welcome aboard our newest crew member. Here, okay, we'll put your head this way a little bit, <laughs> and then you put your yeah. feet there. It's six foot, there and we go. you fit. Perfect. You're there. Perfect. It's all good. No nipple penis. Yeah, yeah, no nipple penis. No nipple penis. It's not for you. I'm not your mommy. Why are you holding me down? This feels wrong in many ways. Wow. 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 That really escalated. Yeah, that was too far. She's like, I'm really good at this. Where are you? Where are you? I cannot see. No, 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 if you're filming and yeah, I don't yeah, yeah, feel. Yeah, yeah. I was feeling a lot. Ooh, you can One see down. the spark. Yeah. Da, da, da. This is what we're doing, Sophia. <laughs> People think we're like living a glamorous sailing life and we're just no. chilling, <laughs> watching sunsets and zapping bugs and petting our baby pig. <laughs> oh, it's Jan invited herself to fix my little hair problem today. Nah. She just wants to cut my hair. That's what it is. She wants to ruin these luscious locks. You have to find somebody that appreciates it. It wouldn't do that. So no. We see if Peanut's ready. No. Peanut. She's not ready. She's, not ready. She's already squeaking. Peanut. What's in your uh, crocodile survival kit? Water with lemon. <laughs> Crikey! We're deep in the, the river of the Solomon Islands. Hunting for crocs. Oh shit! You see in this? I'm not confident in my power and yeah. will to smash a crocodile's face, but... I'm sure when the crocodile is in front of you, you'll get adrenaline and just go for it. Yeah. I'm more for baseball. Uh, so what's that then? Good left. Okay, this time we don't make jokes, okay? <laughs> you did a joke. Yeah, it was well. actually my idea, but it was during the day. Now it's during the night, so to now we don't make crocodile jokes. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really coming. It's coming no. I swear it's coming. <gasps> oh my god, Nate, it's coming. Okay, I'm a little bit scared now. Okay, I'm, I'm a little bit scared now. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm a little bit scared. Are you trying to scare us? No, I'm just trying to break down here. Oh my god, it is, it's not so far, eh, guys? <gasps> oh my god, it's super close. Guys, it might want to attack us, right? No.